So I'm going to ask you a question here. What does a woman who has summited Mount Everest do for her next adventure? Well, she races 251 kilometres across some of the toughest terrain in the world, the Sahara Desert, over seven days. Now, captured in a beautifully shot documentary titled Inspire, that is exactly what entrepreneur, extreme sportswoman, motivational speaker, and I think ultimately philanthropist Lee Den Hunt achieved to raise funds for her foundation, Field of Dreams Children's Centre. Now, when she competed in the Marathon des Sable in Morocco, um, she joins Expresso now to share about uh, some of her experiences. I, I think we'd need about three days to go through everything that you've touched on. I love the fact that I look at your beautiful smile here. I see your beautiful <laughs> smile there. Um, maybe a little bit more nervous in that case. Um, it, I would imagine out in the Sahara, it gets very real, very quickly, kind of like Everest, kind yes. of like all of these situations you, you keep putting yourself in. Before we get into any of those adventures or misadventures, why? Why do you do this? Why take it to that extreme? The question, Graham, is not why. The question is why not? Why not? That. I love to challenge myself. How do you begin preparing for something like this where most of the toughest things you encounter, you can't really prepare for? You don't know what's going to happen out there. You can take it to a point, but where do you start? Is it knowing that physically you can handle everything? You, that's such a brilliant question. The greatest challenge is the things that you cannot train for. Um, I am an athlete. I've done a lot of cardio, a lot of endurance events. I've done five full Ironman. So I do train every single day. But going to the extreme cold and especially the extreme heat, as with the Sahara, some days went up to 53 degrees. On Everest, it was minus 34 degrees. They're definitely the things you cannot train for. What, what surprised you the most? Was it something that happened to you? Was it something you discovered about yourself? What was the biggest kind of revelation that you've had? The greatest thing ending or getting to the top of the world being Mount Everest or crossing the finish line in Morocco after the seven days of doing 251 kilometers, the greatest and most wonderful fulfilling thing is always to realize in your life that nothing, nothing is impossible. Oh, I love that. Now, obviously, you, you had a crew with you filming what, what sounds like the most amazing film. Does that feel comforting to know that there are guys there? Does it add added pressure and that you've got to now create something? You've got an expectation, you're there. It's production, as much as it's, it's a personal journey. What was that side of the experience Absolutely, like? there's no rehearsal, you're in it. You're in it and you've got this crew following you. But they were absolutely amazing. I felt that I had the support team, the support dream team at the end of every day saying well done, at the beginning of the day saying best of luck. It was fantastic. So what's next? Obviously the foundation is a big part of your, your yes. life and your DNA, yes. I'm going to uh, put it like that. What, what's the next big challenge? The next big challenge is in November this year. It's running one of the highest altitude races in the world. It's 160 kilometers over six days and it's back around Everest. Yes. <sighs> Where are you in your training? How do you train for something like that? Do you, do you train for a year? Do you train for six months? You know, do you stop eating two months before? No, how do, you, how no. do you prepare for that? The daily grind is a daily cardio, a lot of cardio, a lot of endurance. What I will be doing is probably in the next two months is going to Nepal to go and run in the mountains because I have to get up high. The highest points in this race are actually higher than Kilimanjaro. So oh the big challenge word. is massive, massive oxygen depletion. So the big challenge is to get as high up as possible and to run for as long as possible at these great heights. It's all a fundraising initiative at the yes. end of the day. You found an incredible way of putting yourself on platforms like this because you give us stories yes. that are so worthy of covering, but ultimately the cause is the most important thing. Where do the funds that you raise go? How does that play out in the real world? Wonderful. I run a foundation with an amazing team called the Field of Dreams Foundation. And what we do is we support uh, many, many, many children near the Hachibiasburg Dam. We've got a beautiful children's centre which is full of children every single day. And the next leg of this journey is to raise money to build an early childhood development centre. That's wow. what we're doing. I yes. absolutely love that. And I think you are, are living proof of what you can do as an individual in South Africa. There really are no barriers. You can do something small or start that journey with one step, but it can go anywhere. So congratulations on Thank all your you successes. So um, I always Thank say you. this to the extreme athletes, please stay safe. <laughs> we are, are really, I live for the return interview that you do when you come back <laughs> after this. But so um, we've got a wonderful viewership. You really do get behind these kinds of initiatives. So share with us, post with us, uh, make sure that you engage our social media team as well. We'd love to, to walk this path with you. Even if we, we can't physically do it, we are there certainly emotionally. Thank you so much. Awesome stuff. If you'd like more information and to donate proceeds toward Lee's um, Foundation Field of Dreams Children Center and what they're trying to do, then you can go um, visit fieldofdreams.org.za and then just go to the navigating page.